Welcome back to the Nerd Dose Radio Podcast, where you're going to get your daily dose of nerd content. How's it going so far, Zach? Not too bad. How about yourself, Kyle? I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long one. Yeah, oh my god, because, uh, and I don't know if it's going to sound different, but I don't know if you guys are going to notice the difference, but we are actually recording in two different locations. <laughs> no, you guys will definitely know the difference. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Well, the only reason why we're doing this is because I am currently back at my parents' house doing my pharmacy rotation, which has been going wonderful so far. <laughs> it's... It's it's not bad. It's honestly fine. It's just pretty much a repeat of what I've been doing already at a pharmacy. It's just at a different like location is what I'll say. It's been going well. You still get to do more though, right? Kind of, but like literally, it's the same thing that I've been doing ever since I started my new job as an intern. So like, it's just more emphasis, I guess. But like, it's been the same thing I've done. Pretty much counting pills, counting tablets. Taking prescription calls, like, oh, I had, like, like, today, literally, I had a doctor or nurse call me and, like, say, oh, I need you to do, like, a written prescription for, like, 10 medications. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and I had to listen to that, like, five times, because I did not, they were going so fast. Um, can you take prescriptions over the phone as an intern? I'm pretty sure yeah, you can, right? Yeah, you can. That's a thing we can do, because the only pharmacists and interns that are under their license can do that, so... Mm -hmm. And apparently I've been doing really good at it, so they trust me a lot. So <laughs> Yeah. I've been just so busy. I like I told you, I've been working two jobs for like the mm. past four weeks. So that is why our content has been very dry lately. I I have to commute to work for an hour each day. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get home, it's like seven o'clock at night. And then I just spend time with uh, my puppy and girlfriend for a couple <laughs> hours. And then I just repeat the process for seven days a week. Mm -hmm. That's like me also, because like literally I work nine to five. I mean, this week I have to do, I work six days in a row. Uh, I'm on my fifth day. So I work tomorrow because I had to pick up a shift. I, literally, I work my nine to five job, come back home. Thank God I only live 15 minutes away from my rotation site. So, but literally, I'm just so exhausted from just standing and running around all day that I just, like, literally, like, go to bed and, like, can't, I just can't move. I'm just so fast, tired and passed out. It's, like, exhausting. God. I still have the energy, though, to do this podcast, so don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. Well, why we've been so busy, we've had some freaking movies release and a new TV series. <laughs> so pumped. I get so happy for Loki. <laughs> yeah, dude, I get Loki's been amazing, but we'll talk mm -hmm. about that later. And like each one of us did go to the theaters. Um, I don't know if it's been your first time since after COVID or not. Oh, honestly, yeah, you're right. It's been that's been my first movie ever since movie theater experience ever since COVID. So mm -hmm. shoot, you're right. Well, it was normal in my opinion, but like, well, I'll get we'll get more deep into it when we talk about a mm -hmm. quiet place. Is what we watched in theaters. Well, separately. Yep. Yeah, I'll have to go more depth of it later, but, like, I just don't like scary movies in theaters, <laughs> but it was but yeah. a good experience, but, like, everything was, it was really nice how they set up, because, like, my movie theater, they do, like, the um, recliner Recliners. things, and, like, wherever you reserve a seat, I think it's, like, you they have, like, a buffer seat in between, so, like, it's still, like, COVID-safe and or COVID-friendly mm -hmm. or whatever. It's been pretty good. It's a nice experience, and my movie theater was actually pretty empty, so that was kind of a good benefit, so... I don't know about yours. Yeah. My theater has been like doing every other rows. Most of my most of the showings I've gone to have allowed um have been pretty empty, so I don't know if they allow that buffer seat. I'm assuming so if they have the rows crossed off. But mm -hmm. yeah, not that many people going, which I'm okay with. The movie we yeah. saw, I wanted us people. I went back, I started going to the movies what, like three, four months ago. I think pretty so, much when they like the whole the, yeah. they, like like let go of it or like yeah allow people my, to go back to them. When my theater opened, I was like, "We're going Saturday to go see Chaos Walking, bad movie, typical." But um, yeah, we had kids like kicking the chair and everything like that. It was just made the experience now fun. Oh, still? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Yeah, it was at the mall, so it is what it is. So mm -hmm. today we're going to be talking about Army of the Dead. Quiet Place Part 2, and then we had to squeeze in the recent Loki episode. <laughs> so, going to be a jam-packed episode for you. 
But first, I don't know how we did it, but we got a small sponsorship. <laughs> I can't so, believe it. I, I'm pretty excited for this. So before we get started with the whole podcast, we're going to do a quick uh, read through of the ad. This podcast is sponsored by Anchor. Zach, ever since you told me about this podcast website, it's awesome. I've loved it ever since. Yeah, good thing you told me about it. It's so much simpler than any other podcast hosting websites. Why don't well, you tell me more about it, Kyle? Well, Anchor has a bunch of creation tools that can allow you to record and edit your podcast either from your phone or even just your computer. You can also just distribute your podcast to like other platforms like Spotify, which we have, and Apple Podcasts, which is being worked on right now, and a bunch more, like a Google Podcast as well. Okay, Kyle, that sounds pretty amazing. Well, what's the best feature about Anchor? Listen to this. It's free to use. And you can literally make money from just doing these podcasts with no minimum listeners. Like anybody, if you just get a couple listeners, you're set. If two pharmacy students who just love talking about nerd content can do this, and you can do the same. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. <laughs> Love that. Not not too bad for our first one, I would say. Yeah. Hey, little goes a long way. Who knows what's going to come in the future? Yes, that is true. So, Army of the Dead, the recent Zack Snyder film, released on Netflix on, what, May 21st, I believe? Yeah, and... I was like, on anime has an interesting cast but most most famously everyone knows uh dave batista as the star and then kind of following that a little bit so less no neighbors yeah i don't know who any of these other people are besides the person the actor that played tanaka because i only remember him from mortal kombat <laughs> and other ones as well so <laughs> yeah it is an interesting movie what do you, what did you think kyle did you like this movie? Do you hate this movie? It's just a zombie. Like, I literally thought of it as, like, a zombie along with a heist movie. And I've seen, like, a bunch of other heist movies. So I feel like it just was the same type of format. But the only mm -hmm. difference was they added zombies into it. I don't know about you, but that's, like, what I've seen. So what I can summarize it so far. Yeah, I didn't like this movie. Pretty much. I kind of I kinda hate this movie. I would never watch it again. I've got a lot of issues with this movie. It just doesn't make sense whatsoever mm -hmm. this movie doesn't know what it wants to be like you got one end of the movie where it's oh it's a zombie movie like go a balls blazing have as much fun as you can just non-stop blood and gore right mm -hmm. and then you got the other half of the movie that tries to take you more serious than that needs to be and that's what Zack snyder freaking does all the time he doesn't know what he wants he wants he does these amazing cool shots and then expect you to have like this fun movie to have. And then it's like, why are you incorporating drama? Um, the best relationship was between the German and then the guy with the saw. And then they kept trying to shoehorn uh Batista and his daughter. Like it just made no sense. It was just it took away from the story, it just wasn't worth it. Yeah, you they know? just tried to milk that so much. Like, especially the relationship between uh, Batista and the daughter. It, it was pointless, in my opinion. Like, I pretty much only cared about, like, the whole action scenes is what I've got out, out, gotten out of this movie. But that's, that's what I've That's the thing, seen. though. There's barely any action scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, so, like, what, a couple cool scenes. Like, maybe when so, they were in the basement getting into the vault. But that's pretty much what I've gotten it from. You got a Zack Snyder film with barely any action scenes. That right there should tell you, oh, he probably took it more dramatic than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. It was just weird. Like the color, I don't know. Most It just wasn't bright enough. You know, they're in Las Vegas. The color was so dull. I don't know how you picked the Las Vegas setting and not have flashing lights. Just color all around. But no, it was just dead. It was boring. It needed more color. Yeah, I feel like literally, I mean, I understand why they had to not add as much color, but because it was obviously like a post-apocalyptic scene and like there wasn't a lot of lights. I mean, I do remember from one of the scenes, they were like on the casino floor of, they were on the casino floor and like, I think the lights were, they had like the whole typical uh, casino scene, but nothing, like you said, there wasn't a bunch more colors and it's just pretty That's dull, especially even the vault part. Like, when they were in the vault trying to get in there, they were just, like, bland as hell. That that scene where they were in Vegas, like, in the casino, that's how the entire movie should have been. Like, with that much color and lights and flashing. 
the fact that it had as little color as it did, and I'm not blaming the people on the color correction because we all know it was Zack Snyder's direction. And it just showed he wanted to make it more dramatic than it needed to be. It was just yeah. It was even bad. adding like a bunch more of those like slow mos. I just realized like yeah, it was Zack Snyder. It's there's a bunch of slow mos that they added into the movie, and like mm -hmm. it just gave me more like his movie of just Justice League that he directed. Mm -hmm. Too much like was... unnecessary slow mos for no reason. Did you know they're making a whole universe of this like I guess story? Like yeah, I was reading about about this, and like I know they're making, I believe, in the future, an animated series of this. Yeah, I saw that they were they're looking into making an army of the dead animated series. I'm not sure if it's going to be this follow the same plot or if it's going to continue on from the aftermath. It, it's still obviously in the works as of this recording. That's what I've seen, and like I don't know if you remember. I mean, going like I said, going back to this vault scene. Uh, one of the characters had like this monologue about a time loop theory and that's what their whole plot is is like th there was those dead bodies that were already there that were trying to break into the vault the guy's monologue was saying like yeah what if these dead bodies were actually from a different timeline and they're pretty much in an endless cycle of death and rebirth and death and rebirth and pretty much the main guy who told them to go to the vault was like their puppet master just like making to do this whole thing this was like so a theory know, that I read into it. Yeah, I read that too. I think it's funny that people are theorizing about this. It's done. Like, I understand why, but it's just like, is it necessary? No. Again, I, thought, another... like, I thought this was just going to be a random movie that they were just add on to Netflix, have a plot, you know, have a decent rating and go on with their day. But no, now they're making it have like a bunch of lore, unnecessary like lore to it. Yeah. And like I said, making it more dramatic than it needs to be. You're, yeah. you're having a zombie heist movie. It doesn't get any easier than that. You don't mm -hmm. need someone to think, oh, they're in an endless time loop. Yeah. That makes total sense. And then, okay, what oh, spoilers, if you haven't realized by now, but like, what the heck was the deal with the zombie baby? Like, I was... thought that was unnecessary. I thought, I don't know, and like the whole zombie leader cult thing that they were trying to add into it as well. I don't, I didn't care for it, in my opinion. I don't know about you. Like, I felt like that was kind of unnecessary. I thought yeah. it was just better just to have the zombies, and that's it. But, like, I understand the, like, main reasoning as to why they had to add it. No, I see zero reasoning. It made no sense. Like, why do we care about the zombies procreating? Like, what does that mm -hmm. do? Is that supposed to scare us? But, yeah, it just means they're, they're smashing, which is even weirder mm -hmm. to think about. Yeah, there is a universe. I think that there's a prequel starring the German guy, Ludwig, and I believe it comes out in November this year. Oh, great. So pre so like you said, now there's going to be unnecessary lore and more story into this plot. Where that's not really necessary, in my opinion. It's about how he made his way to America and how it was such an interesting story. What? That's like... A yeah. complete like beeline or tangent that is not really related yeah, they, to the movie. They at are all. reaching really hard for this one. They have this thing filmed, and I think it's close to ready to go. Like that is such a reach to to create this B, yeah, one dimensional character, and then you're making up a, a dumb story, and then you're gonna call it a movie. Yeah. That's so I dumb. I, it's so pointless in my opinion. One thing this movie kept on doing is it kept on making a mystery, like, about how um, the lore behind the zombies. Do you know what I mean? Like, they made it seem like they were more interesting and that there was so much more to come from them. Like, there's right? a, like a character development, like, we should actually yeah. care about the zombies? Or, yeah, or just, like, like a, a back, more background about them or whatever. Just more information about them. And then it never happened. Oh, I see just, what you mean. That's yeah, it's just... like I don't understand why they needed to again. Like we did get like a little bit of story into them. We really need it though. I feel like it's just better that they're zombies and that they were gonna try to take over. But that's it. But no, they yeah, gotta yeah. add a bunch of unnecessary plots. Like the opening, that it was a giant buildup of what is what's in the container. Oh, where did it come from? Nope, not gonna tell you where it came from. Just gonna be like, oh, it's just a giant zombie, as if it's nothing. I don't know. It's just. It came off as weird. Very yeah. Weird. In my, like, when I was, as I'm, like, thinking, like, from the beginning of the movie, like, how they hold the whole setup of, like, how, like, how do they set up the camp? Or how do they set up the whole, like, barrier of, like, those big 
storage containers around a whole city of Vegas. Like, yeah, how do you, yeah, how do you set up thousands of storage containers around uh, everlasting what zombie apocalypse? Yeah, <laughs> it's like unnecessary, so, like random, like I see it from the beginning and then it jumped. Like I remember they had like a good the introduction to like the whole the character list and all that. It, it didn't really give a whole like introduction to like oh how did this whole setup begin or like how did this whole um how did they form this whole city and why are they the ones that are separated and all that. I don't know if you would realize that or not, but that's what I've seen. I liked um when they were watching the news. Sorry, we're jumping all over the place. Stuff just yeah. was coming and going. Um when they're on this news and like oh the reason nuke it on the 4th of july is because the president thinks it would be cool oh he did not say that i didn't even realize yeah, that part I, I'm like why are you i don't know that's just another dumb thing in the movie oh my god on america's birthday <laughs> yeah me. america's birthday so what uh did you like any of did you think the zombies are cool or anything to it? Some of the zombies are cool, and, like, I did like some of the uh, fight scenes or anything like that. Like, the casino scene was pretty cool. Um, I like the tiger. The tiger scene was pretty cool. Again, like, I love how there's just a random tiger that just came about. I don't know, like, I, obviously I feel like it's it's Vegas, so, like... Yeah, of course there's gonna be a tiger there. Yeah, from, like, a freaking mag magic show or whatever. How the frick does a tiger get infected, and, like, <laughs> how did that yeah. come be, you know? But again, it's just... It's just like you're gonna have that like oh it's a simple zombie movie of course there's gonna be a zombie tiger that saw was never used on a zombie that's what i hate the most you it was it really this... nope you introduced this big ass saw like this guy who carries around a badass and um he never used it <laughs> so it just brought an unnecessary weapon with him essentially yeah, pretty much. I mean, oh. Unnecessary sick weapon, too. It would have been awesome to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, one big thing I kind of wanted to talk about was the situation with the pilot, uh, Tig Notaro. So, according to her, she never even met any of the cast members. Oh, yeah, I did remember reading about this. I think they, like, gr like green screen shot her into, like, the whole movie. They She just filmed, like, her own scenes and then, like, pretty much sent it to the director to, like, edit it and all that crap in. Like, that's what they did do. Um, so it was Chris D'Elia, or I don't know how do you pronounce his name, but he had sexual, Delia, yeah. he had sexual, um, assault claims. And I think at one point he even, he admitted to them. So they mm -hmm. cut him out of the entire movie. And then Tig Notaro, who I thought did, a, I liked her. I liked, I thought she was a fun addition to the cast. But yeah, she filmed everything on the green screen and they just post edited it back into it. Hmm. Which is kind of nuts to think about. They already had the movie entirely filmed. So that's why they couldn't like go back and re otherwise it would cost them millions of dollars to refilm all that. Yeah, true. Save some money, even though they're spending so much money on movies anyways. I wish I knew that going into the movie and then I would have kind of kept an, oh, a better eye out about the situation. But I heard like there were some spots where you could be like, when you could tell it was obviously on a, on a green screen. But yeah, you can tell like she was green screened into the movie. Like they mm -hmm. like added her in different or you can see like the outlines in some sometimes or whatever. Mm -hmm. As someone who didn't know about the situation i didn't ever pick i guess mission accomplished <laughs> i guess so like at least they still were able to to incorporate her into the movie without making it so bad even though it was still a bad movie yeah this but, movie was way too long yeah how long was it again like two hours or two hours but, too long yeah it could have uh it should have been a lot long a lot shorter i think you could have easily shaved off a good what 40 30, 30 40, 40 minutes mm -hmm. like comparing it to like what a quiet place too i think that was only like what a hun an hour and 40 minute movie yeah Dude, this movie yeah a quiet place too is a quick wonderful watch and army of the dead is two and a half hours two and a half like, hours of long zombie chasing long fight, fight scenes two action scenes that were decent yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And like a bunch of random ass slow mos and dramatic shots by Zack Snyder, and mm -hmm. that's his movie. <laughs> the daughter, the mom that the daughter saved, or I don't even think she saved her because she ended up dying in the plane crash, right? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she, she needs to go straight to jail. 
she has th what three kids and then she decides two or three kids and she decides to go into that zombie infested in vegas like what is that that makes zero sense why the fuck mm -hmm. is this daughter like dave batista's daughter like trying to save this woman it's just another dumb b plot like a random beeline of a of this movie that like they had to add out of no reason <laughs> Do you have anything else you may want to add to this we i think i don't know i'm trying to remember from the ending uh one of the guys i think they he got back to like somewhat normal <laughs> land and what wasn't he infected or something yeah, like that? Right? Like, See, that makes zero sense mm -hmm. i don't even like, remember how he got infected was it yeah, like during one of the fight scenes or anything yeah he was fighting like the alpha and but the alpha never bit him that's the funny part he never saw <laughs> him get bit he just saw him beat the shit out of it Mm -hmm. And then instead of turning into a zombie quickly, like every other situation, they wait, what, three, four days? Yeah, to... it was a yeah. delay. So that's what the sequel is going to be about, Kyle. Oh, it's going to now spread instead I, of, I, you know, it would have been not in Vegas, but now it's going to be all over the U.S. now. That's oh, going to be fantastic. Geez. That's where we wanted a long, drawn-out scene just to show him he's bit. Mm -hmm. right. we don't need that why do we need that like cool you left that on cliffhanger just have dave batista dying and then black out to the sunset then that's how you end a decent movie but no mm -hmm. you need to go another four to five minutes i shit you not like it just kept running it just kept going and going i'm like what is the point of this exit like what is the point of this outro yeah, it's just milking it, literally. Like, literally milking, like, so that way they can try to make that sequel and, like, try to just continue on and make this, like, a whole series or whole movie series of this damn movie for no reason at all. I think so I, unnecessarily dumb. I listened to a pot, like, not podcast, but an interview with Zach Snyder. I hate bashing on him because he seemed like a really cool guy. I just think, I think he was a cinematographer before he became a director. So that's why the <laughs> shots are always like more intense than like a regular movie. Yeah, I think he needs to like that. I don't, I'm not going to be excited for any more Zack Snyder movies, especially after hearing like the sequel that he was going to make to Justice League with mm -hmm. uh, Batman having a baby with Lois Lane and just all that card pitch. I'm not ready for it. I feel like Zack Snyder should just continue on being a cinematographer and not a director and <laughs> just like. But all of his movies start off with this, a slow montage intro. Mm -hmm. Do you do you realize that? Like that Watchmen started like that. Um, Justice League, the original, the one that Joss Whedon did, it, it showed the crowd breaking out and starting riots and riots in slow motion. And then you got this one where they shoot saving people from Vegas in slow motion. Yeah, it was like I an introduction to like the cast and like showing like where they came from. And then like they had each character stand like behind a backdrop, holding like a original picture of like what they were before this whole apocalypse happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's just funny to see how every single movie he has is like the opening credits of a slow mo. It's just Needs to stay. I guess that's yeah. like a directing scene, like here's directive, like thing, like that's how you can recognize that's a Zack Snyder film is like those type of like introductions. I could recognize a Zack Snyder film on the heartbeat. That bitch is too <laughs> recognizable, and I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> like I understand he's trying to make himself like independent, but like or unique, or unique, yeah. But it's too much. But I feel like I understand why though. Yeah. What would you uh, rate this out of 10, Kyle? <laughs> uh, probably at a 4.5 out of 10. Yeah, I was going to rate it at a nice 4 out of 10. I did not yeah, like this. It, like I said, the only good scenes were just like the fighting scenes and all that. But like, plot was bleh. I really didn't care for the plot. But yeah, What's... that's all I cared about. <laughs> what sucks is that I was actually really interested in this movie. I was like, oh yeah, it was that, um combining a heist movie with a zombie movie. Very crazy idea, but let's have some fun with it. And it just, mm -hmm. I was actually pretty excited for this movie, I'm not going to lie. It looked like it was going to be batshit crazy, and it exactly wasn't. It was kind of boring in some parts. 
Yeah, I like. I think I watched the trailer, and I was pretty excited for it because I really like. You know, certain zombie movies are pretty cool to watch. And I was pretty, and you know, from like you said, it's Zack Snyder that's directing it. I would think mm-hmm. there'd be some cool elements in it. I felt like I didn't really like it. I didn't like it as much, and I'm sad about it. What can so, you do? Exactly. It was still a good watch. It was a nice, cool little zombie like sprinkle, but like that's it. It wasn't that exciting. Like I've seen other zombie movies that I feel like were a little bit better. Oh, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So, our next topic, Quiet Place Part 2. <laughs> Fucking love this movie. Um, Quiet Place Part 2 pretty much continues off of the first movie, exactly where it left off. Mm-hmm. Um, it's starring Emily Blunt, uh, Noah Jupe, Millicent Simmons, and uh, Killian Murphy. And then mm-hmm. a little bit of John Krasinski within the opening scene. First off, I like I don't mind watching scary movies. I think like I kind of alluded from the beginning. Like I don't mind it, but I just don't like watching it in theaters. And this is the this, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, this was actually the first scary movie, well, sick scary quote unquote, I guess, or suspense movie that I've ever watched in theaters. Just wanted to let you know that. I don't. I barely consider this a horror movie, but let me tell you, Kyle. A movie like this, where like sound, no, like quietness is supposed to make you scared, mm-hmm. deserves to be seen in a movie theater. You're yeah. not going to get that kind of experience on a surround sound, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, don't get me wrong. It was a not cool experience to like experience that, I'll say. You know, it's literally the silence is what scares you. Just the like where, and then for some reason, just a random ass loud noise just like comes out of nowhere and shit. And it's just like, uh, I don't, I sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It's just like, I just, I, it just, I kind of got a little triggered, but like I pushed to it. And it's, it was mm-hmm. still a good movie, don't get me wrong. No, I, I love this movie. This is the kind of shit I eat up, like the slop. I'm like a hog right now eating this movie up because it's, it's action packed, it's suspenseful keeps me on my toes and it's a nice quick watch i i don't know why but i starting to really um pay attention to like certain movies run times and like whether a scene should be in it or not i felt like this nice hour and 40 minutes or so was a nice watch especially Mm -hmm. during the summer so i guess a little background on this movie was like for the original how the original got made was that, um, I guess John's producers went up to him and asked if he kind of wanted to star in this movie. And once he saw the script, he pretty much said, I don't want to only star in this movie. I want to take this thing over and direct it. From that script he had, he kind of changed a little bit with his directing and then made the first movie. And I don't know what you thought of the first movie, but I loved the first movie. No, I did love it also. It was really it was a really cool experience. I haven't like I didn't watch it in theaters, but like even just watching it like normally at home or whatever. It was still I loved the plot was really nice. I really loved like how it shows like this family trying to survive this like pretty much alien invasion and like they the only way to stay safe is to just silence. It's amazing like how they were how uh, I forgot the main character's guy, the guy, uh, how he was able to pretty much set up everything, knew mm-hmm. from the start how to survive this and like help his family survive through this situation as well. And like, I just love, it was really interesting to see like how he was able to like implement this. Mm-hmm. The first one has been pretty much stuck in my head. Like I never forgot about that movie. Mm-hmm. I, I love it so much. It's such a unique take on, I get, like, like you said, horror and suspense and it's something that has kind of changed how you view a movie entirely for in some aspects Mm -hmm. it's a different type of like horror that you experience Mm -hmm. you know people always people think like this typical horror movie is like a monster or a like a serial killer is on the loose or whatever and is gonna murder these people or like an alien invasion or like aliens attacking all that like Obviously, there was still a lot of these elements. The whole, like, atmosphere was pretty much the silence and then the random noise. Mm-hmm. You can't make a noise or else you're screwed, essentially, is, like, the whole, like, premise in the movie. And it's a very interesting take on what he was, what John Krasinski was able to do. Yeah, you can't fart in your sleep. Why are you living <laughs> in this universe? 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, imagine if you would you would you survive in this if you this ever no, happened to no, us? I'm dead. I'm dead the first night I sleep. Like <laughs> I'm dying from a fart without a doubt. It's happening. <laughs> or even snoring. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. I mean, like, I guess there are ways, like some smart ways that you can survive in a movie, but like, will I know that? Hell no. I'd rather just Hell no. take me out. Me. Yes. Just out and I'll I'll jump off a roof <laughs> and call it a day. <laughs> So originally, John Krasinski didn't want to make a sequel. Um, really? Yeah, he was happy with how the movie ended, but it being such a big success, um, he agreed to he agreed to do uh, another story if it was like a, if he felt like it was worth continuing. If he had pretty much if he had another story, mm -hmm. and of course he had a lot more creative control. And then I'm pretty sure he wrote this entire movie. Not himself, but... So At least, like, I a majority of it he wrote. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, the first movie, he was given a script, he edited it, but this movie, he kind of created his own story. Mm -hmm. Which is so pretty I cool, because he really did knock this out of the park, in my opinion. Like, I thought it yeah. was really... I think it's a little bit better than the first and than the first one. I don't I know about you. I think better than the original. I think um, the first one's very grounded, which I do like that aspect and feature about that movie. This movie kind of like pulls back on being grounded and kind of gives you a taste of what kind of the rest of the world is like, but not necessarily going on that big scale. It kind of like just introduces a couple more characters. It doesn't introduce you to how the whole world is impacted, but just just kind of pulls back. And I think in like the perfect way. Like, I feel like the first one like focuses on the family Versus the second one, it does focus a lot of the family, but it still was able to introduce a bunch of other characters into it as well. Mm -hmm. And I thought Killian Murphy was a great addition to the cast. Yeah, I liked him as well. He was pretty... <laughs> Even though, like, the only thing I can think of from when I ever see Killian Murphy is just either from Batman or uh, Inception. But he was still a good actor. I didn't mind him. He's in every Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah, that's his guy. Nolan keeps coming back to the same people if you really look at it. Um, Dunkirk. Yeah, Dunkirk. Well, that's kind of funny. Anyways, the opening scene, like the yeah, I guess you could call it a scene. Um, with the baseball, baseball game, the crash. The prequel. Yeah, the prequel. Kind of a little taste. One thing I kind of picked up, and from what I've been hearing from other people as well, that the opening scene of the original. Uh, part one had it had you in the grocery store, mm -hmm. but it had you, but it was very quiet and um, very con not conscious, very careful not to make any noise. One thing I did pick up from a TikTok was that there no one took the chips in the opening scene of part one because it makes noise it you cannot open so, much noise. <laughs> so like when they're walking by the shelves you can see all the chips on the, on the shelf so i think that's funny mm -hmm. anyways in part two um it does the exact opposite it's opening of lee inside the grocery store but he's making noise not giving a care in the world and i thought that was kind of like a cool um nod back to the original mm -hmm. it gives them like a little like Sort sort of normalcy, like what they experience, what they experienced before this whole thing went down, like living a normal life, you know, going to a baseball game essentially, just to live life, you know, living their life as normal human beings, and then you know, going to the grocery store, pick up your stuff, and then going to enjoy a game, be with your family, have a good time, go home, and repeat until end of life or whatever. But then all of a sudden, you look up in the sky and you see. These little like meteors that are coming down to Earth, and that's <laughs> when the whole world changed. And it's like, it shows what changes. Mm -hmm. And I think it was beautiful, beautifully directed with all the chaos running back and forth, mm -hmm. switching from his wife's point of view to um, Lee's point of view, and just slowly getting seeing people get involved. I love this alien design. I think it's really cool, and I really like. I, I wouldn't say like, but I, I enjoy the fact that they don't, they're not killing to eat them. They just want to kill. That's all they want to yeah, do. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like. That's so scary when you think about that. I feel like any, probably like the aliens, like MO, I guess, 
would be like any noise is what's going to scare them and that's why they had to kill it i feel like that's like their only like mo i don't see any other purpose i'm not sure they're going to be like reproducing or whatever just to create more of them like i don't even see them eat you literally just see them kill now i think about it yeah so it just makes like the more you not know about them it's like the more you fear Mm -hmm. that's right but we did learn a couple things about them like they can't swim in water so i don't know did you like that that feature added to them i mean i see why they can't swim also like looking at their structure like body structure because like literally like their hands are just like at a point so like even if you imagine them like flapping their arms back and forth there's like no like motion for them to stay afloat so like Mm -hmm. you can see that they're gonna die if they're in water which is i guess a good survival tactic but like you won't know until like later on you won't know like immediately because you're still learning about it so like at least i think it's been like what a year into this that yeah the movie that they and they're still learning about it also the way they a lot of people don't like how they added this because like the more you know about the alien like the less scary they seem you know the first movie just had like one just one of them like taunt them the entire movie Mm -hmm. that was the whole movie whereas this one they're blowing up they're killing them left and right like they're going through like five or six of them throughout the whole movie so like the fear aspect is slowly diminishing with the alien in my opinion or what it seems like well i feel like it's because we're learning more about it and like we can see their strengths or their weaknesses and all that so like that's i feel like is what they're going to continue on if they're going to try to continue with this whole movie series and i think they are making i don't know if they're making a part three or a spin-off but something is coming out in like two years and it's not directed by john krasinski so i think it's a spin-off what would the spin-off even be about though i have no idea like i was thinking maybe different family or like i know from the ending of the quiet place 2 where they're just pretty much separated and it's just trying to figure out a way to get back with each other. Um, I guess that would be a way to like introduce the third one. And like you can also see as like the aftermath of like the whole island invasion from the one monster, like seeing how do people react and all that and see like, are they safe? Do you think they should leave the island? Blah, 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 or whatever. So I feel like that would be a plot to like what the third movie would be. I think it would be cool to do like a time jump, like a nice five to six years down the line, kind of see where they're at. Cause they're, you could tell the kids are growing up. That could be an interesting story. So that bear trap scene, Kyle, did that freak you out? Oh my God. I was paranoid as hell. I was like, shut the fuck up, shut the hell up. Stop screaming. You're going to kill yourself. Oh my God. That oh, was kind of scary. But like, I know also... I felt so much pain for that kid. Mm-hmm. You can feel it. Yeah, he could. And like him did just have that shock where he didn't like react at all. And then just to him screaming bloody murder. Mm-hmm. And all his mouth just quiet. It's it was, oh my god. It that I do remember that and that would like paranoid me and like I just it was like trying to tell myself like shut the fuck up, you can't do this to yourself. Like it was so stressful. <laughs> yeah, this movie definitely made you feel suspense. Like, when she, I thought she lost her hearing aid, I thought he took it. Like, I was freaking out in the seat. Yeah, I thought he was, like, a backstabber. Damn it. I wouldn't have been surprised if it happened. Having her, like, freak out and then not hear anything at the same time was just so scary to watch. hmm I feel like if Emmett wasn't, like, a family friend to the Abbots, then... There, this would have been a backstabbing moment. Thank God it didn't, because like now they're kind of besties, and I feel like now Emmett's gonna be like their second dad essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one mm-hmm. thing this movie kept hinting at was like you don't like all the promotions, like you know the people who are alive aren't worth saving anymore. But then you never mm-hmm. got a real taste of that, except for that one group on the docks. But that was only for like ten minutes. But like everything else, like I, that, I, that kind of bugged me a little bit. Like there was bait in you keep thinking like this is what the movie's gonna be like and then it wasn't like that but it was cool when uh we're switching from like scene to scene to scene between evelyn emily bond's character and then uh the marcus the little the boy's character i thought that was really Mm -hmm. cool 
Yeah, it was a nice like seeing like different perspectives from like, oh, what's they got what's he experiencing? What's Evelyn going through right now? What's going on with the doc scene? It was able even though there were like three different scenes, they were still were able to execute it pretty well, like with the cuts and all that. I said the editing was really cool. Yeah, the editing was like pretty nuts. And like I'm really surprised, like I said, executing that because even the scene bet- the ending scene between both Evelyn or not Evelyn. Yeah, Evelyn and uh reagan trying to fight their own like monster and Mm -hmm. it was pretty cool like that they were pretty much able to kill both of them somewhat at the same time using the uh hearing aid because you can tell like it was kind of like a saving grace for them especially for uh evelyn well see i really liked that ending scene with them going back and forth between marcus and reagan um both using the sound for their own alien that they have with them. But I think it's really cool to have, um, you know, Emmett's been saving Reagan the whole movie. Mm. And here's the chance for her to, like, save him, I guess. And the same goes with Evelyn, who has been, Emily Blunt's character has been saving her son all movie. But now here's his chance to finally yeah. get back. So because... I really like how they had to, they kept switching shot to shot to shot between the two kids while they're protecting the adults in the back. Yeah, you're right. Because in my opinion, I did not like Marcus. (laughs) Because I felt... (laughs) Yeah, that's the one part I don't like about this movie. Hey, let's go walk around the factory when no one's around. Or how about, like, let's... How about we almost not kill our new baby because he doesn't know how to work an oxygen tank. Mind you, Mm -hmm. I get he's young, so he probably didn't know that, but, like... I should have taught him that. I feel like you're introducing it. (laughs) Yeah, or even like when he locked himself in the furnace. Like mm. I understand like the panic and the frustration like that the monster was yeah. there, but like I guess even like one second just to be double check that that blanket was there to like prevent it from actually closing. You know, they could still save them and they didn't have to experience that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Just just kind of a uh, easy way easy ways to make more suspense, I guess. More suspense and more stress <laughs> because mm-hmm. I was stressing through that, yeah. especially with the baby. Because I'm like, oh my god, the baby's gonna die. I had a throughout the whole movie, I kept thinking that I baby's know. gonna die somehow. Mm-hmm. Like, I could just feel it in my guts. Yeah, the jump scares got me. I jumped out of my chair a few times. Well, personally, I every any type of jump scare, like throughout any movie, just scares the shit out of me, no matter what. Like, I just don't like jump scares at all. <laughs> but like, I've grown to get somewhat used to it, but. Yeah, the jump scares in this movie was pretty pretty good in my opinion. I more like what I've experienced, I guess. I'm okay with jump scares for the most part. I used to be really afraid of scary movies, but then I started dating my girlfriend at uh came in and she kinda introduced me to more horror movies and I was pretty much started to really um enjoying them more. So yeah, but the jump, yeah, I did jump a few times. The biggest one was when they were in the radio station and it just came out of nowhere. Oh, where it killed, which one? It depends on which one. Like, it was right like, after, right after they killed, um, Jeremiah Hansu, I think that's his name. Oh, all that one? Yeah, that kind of fucked me up. <laughs> yeah, they're like, where'd it go? And then it just crashed right in. That one jumped, made me jump. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, when they were in the car. Like for me, I think it was when they were in the car, just driving, and then Reagan pulls the sheet bag and it freaking pops out at you. And I'm like, that fucking scared the shit out of me. <laughs> this movie, I caught myself fist pumping a bunch of times for this movie because I was happy for the characters. I was like, hell yeah. When he when he pulled that hearing aid out of his mouth, I was like, hell yeah, he got away. Yeah, I really like to hear that. Mm-hmm. Anything else you might? want to add in this movie i did like a cool little bit of the there was a little bit of the easter egg also like going back to like the prequel scene like i don't know if you remember where it was lee just going through that uh grocery store you saw they did a little zoom in onto the rocket ship i thought that was pretty neat that they had to add that into there it was like yeah. hey, you remember this rocket ship you're gonna remember this rocket <laughs> ship for the rest of your life <laughs> and i'm like damn <laughs> big sad big sad mm-hmm. what would you uh Rate this, Kyle. This movie, I probably rate it at probably even a seven and a half or an eight out of ten in this one. I I'm gonna give it a solid nine out of ten. Yeah. Damn. This movie did everything I love. Um, 
kept me on my toes, was suspenseful, it was a quick watch. Because it was such a quick watch, like you didn't really focus on all the dumb things in the movie. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of like were, you ignored those nitpicks because it was so fast paced and edited well. Whereas like with Army of the Dead, you have you're you stick with those nitpicks because they're dragging out the movie for so long and it's not entertaining. So kind of a nice correlation between the two that we're reviewing today. Yeah, like I like it's like a two hour movie with a bunch of long ass plots versus uh one and a half one and a half to one hour forty minute movie where it was still shorter but still was able to execute a bunch of scenes in a well in an executed manner in a perfectly edited movie. Yeah. I thought it was like the perfect summer movie. I can't wait to watch this movie again. Mm-hmm. I definitely watch it. I'll pirate it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, once I hear that, like on the Blu-ray, I'm gonna buy it instantly, just like I did with the first one. God, I can't believe you still buy movies. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't help it, man. It hits different when it's in Blu-ray. One day, no, I'll get it a player. So hopefully, that'll be sooner than later. All right, are we moving on to Loki? Let's do it. All right. Uh, Loki just came out, what, two days ago as of recording? Mm-hmm. And I think it it was the first episode. I think it pretty much is a really cool setup of what this show, what this show is going to come out, come to be. To be honest, when I heard the lineup of all these Disney Plus shows, I was not excited for any of them. Uh, I thought Cat- <laughs> Falcon and the Winter Soldier was going to be cool, but I wasn't freaking out over it, I thought. WandaVision, Loki, Hawkeye. I was like, this is what they came up with. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away by WandaVision. Never expected that. I enjoyed Falcon and the Winter Soldier for what it was. But then Loki, I like had zero expectations because the biggest thing that confused me on why Loki deserved a show was because they already did his arc. You know, his arc from turning evil or being evil and then kind of going back and forth between evil and good, and then at the end, willing to sacrifice himself to try to kill Thanos. Like, that right there is, like, the full circle for his character. So It's like his whole life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So to have, like, a Disney Plus show, like, continue that, it was, I guess, off-putting to see. But after watching the trailers, I think I only watched one because... Sometimes I don't like to spoil myself. Um, but then after watching the first episode, I was amazed. I was like, I don't know how they did it, but this has been um, my favorite opening of the three uh, Disney Plus series. Yeah, it's been pretty good. I'm really excited how, they, how they're how they going to pretty much execute this. So, But it's I th- from what I remember, it's going to focus on... Uh, there, it was pretty much from Avengers Endgame, where they were able to get Loki from like not destroying pretty much all of New York but somehow because of the whole time heist that they were going to do to get the Infinity Stone get the Tesseract but somehow Hulk was able to freaking ruin it all and (laughs) destroy Tony and pretty much free the Tesseract and that's how Loki was able to escape and this is pretty much how it sets up this whole Loki uh TV series yeah I think that's kind of cool with how they figured out what to do with this Mm mm-hmm it's going to focus on this type of Loki versus, like, the Loki we've seen throughout, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Thor in a Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, uh, from the Infinity War, from the beginning. It'll, it's going to be interesting how they're going to still, because it's still from 20, from uh, this Loki that we're going to be watching through, still him being evil somewhat. We mm-hmm. haven't, we, it's going to be mainly focused on him, whereas from what we've seen, it's so nice. Yeah. Or trying to be mischievous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Trying to. But I think it's off to a really solid start. I have no idea where this story is going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, the quality of the show is, I think, the best that it's been of the three. Um, you could tell this show's, I think, going to require the most special effects. Yeah. And I heard, I heard they built most of their sets. So a lot oh. of this is real, which is really cool. When you think about it but i'm very i'm really excited to see where this goes um to start mm-hmm. off what loki gets captured by the tba right off the bat which i mind you i'm very confused how the tesseract just 
bat him out in the middle of the desert. It was like a random desert in like Mongolia, I think. Yeah, the Golgi Desert, which I think is funny because we've seen the Tesseract being used and it doesn't spit people out like that. So I'm curious to know if that if that was his first place or not where he went. I think I actually uh now that I now that you say that, there was a little I think it was a TikTok that it kind of reminded me. Um, like it was, you know, how Loki ended up in that desert after using the Tesseract. It was pretty much the same thing that happened to uh Tony from the yeah, first Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it had like it the was... same camera angles and shots. Mm hmm So I I'm like thinking was... the Tesseract had like had the probably like the Tesseract had some sort of like memory or just like it was just like some sort of elude or uh I just think it was I think it was just an elude from the directors. Mm hmm Just kind of something fun to do. Um, just like hype the, maybe, uh, hype the fans. Yeah, maybe a little hint of, oh, here we are starting the story all over again. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Gets taken by the TVAs, gets, uh, goes through the whole process of signing, taking the tickets. Uh, we learn in a fun little video, which I thought was delightful, of how the timekeepers control the timeline and how a nexus can cause many multiverses and that a time, a time variant, which Loki is, can cause um, the timeline to be branched off, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And if they catch the time variant and fast enough, like the timeline can be restored. And I think that little video was hilarious to watch. Um, <laughs> I find it funny how, like Dave mentioned, if you're late for work, your time period. <laughs> Catch me being the lake tomorrow. Yeah, so I can be a so time period. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. And it was pretty funny how it was like a kind of alluding, like the, it was like a cartoonish type of style. Um, like giving that, like it was like what? I feel like it was 1950s cartoon style. It was funny how we're, it was still like cute and it was cutesy and all that, but it still had like a serious message to like. Especially from, it was like, don't, like, when Loki was going to go through, like, the whole line to be admitted or whatever, uh, to make sure don't lose your ticket. And it, I thought it was just going to be a funny joke or whatever, but no, if you don't have your ticket, when by the time you reach the end of the line, then you're going to pretty much disintegrate into pieces by this, by the <laughs> people. <laughs> it reminded me of that stick that melts people from uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh yeah, you, not the a grandmaster <laughs> used. So I think that was funny. Just Instead of melting, it just yeah. disintegrates. Which I think is funny. The judge is actually the same person. I don't, you've watched Black Mirror, right? Mm -hmm. She is from the uh, San Junipero episode. She was. Yeah. God. Also, you're was... quiet. Sorry. Oh no, you're fine. Okay. I, I I don't. I have no idea how to pronounce her name, but yes, she is from that episode, which is kind of cool. Oh. Do you think that judge scene was kind of, like, random, though? Or does it, like, make sense that they had to add it? I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, kind of moves the story forward, and it gives mm -hmm. a little tease of, like, oh, the Avengers time-traveled. How come they're not punished? Oh, mm -hmm. that's what they're supposed to do. I feel like that's kind of bullshit, though, <laughs> but, like, I understand mm -hmm. why. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was kind of cool. I think mm -hmm. we're going to definitely get some more taste of that character throughout the star, um, series, I mean. Mm -hmm. I think also more uh, with the guard also. the uh, God, what's her name? Uh, the guard that was like pretty much fighting Loki mm -hmm. like, half the time. <laughs> yeah, she was She was funny. But then we kind of got our first, uh, first look at uh, Owen Wilson's character, Mobius. Mobius. <laughs> And that's that's what I love about um he's so far a great character. I don't know. Like these these shows have um each Disney Plus show has done a great job at introducing a side character and then making them good characters. You know, WandaVision, you got Agnes <laughs> and then you got uh what was her name? Monica Rambo, both great mm -hmm. characters. Um you got a little bit of the uh, in uh uh John Walker. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get it with um, Owen Wilson, Mobius. That'll be very interesting. What do you think about having Owen Wilson, though? 
I think it's a good cast. I think it's pretty random, but I also think that's why it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Because I I just always assume Owen Wilson is just like some random funny guy that like with like comedic relief and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like always in the rom coms. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't see. I I mean, for like this series especially, it's gonna be more action based and like. I don't really see Owen Wilson as like an action star besides like this one movie he did um where he was like in like Taiwan or some like Asian country and like they were like going to get kidnapped or something like that but mm-hmm. like I don't know it'll be interesting seeing Owen Wilson not seeing him as like a comedic person but as uh well still having a little bit comedic relief but with also a little bit of action and dramatic play I guess into this so it'll be interesting with this with Owen. Yeah, I don't I think it's a good casting. I uh I've been really enjoying that uh character interaction between the two. Mm-hmm. I think it's, because he was like a have, fan. Yeah, they yeah they have good chemistry. They bounce right off each other. Mm-hmm. And but I think it's like really cool with um him going back and forth. Kinda when uh during that one scene where he's I guess you could say grilling him. Yeah, roasting him essentially. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Calling him a loser. Like you're alive just so other people can see, um, become the better selves that they are. Mm-hmm. Or like his, where he was like pretty much going into like why Loki is like this, and she, like mm-hmm. pretty much grilling him. Like, why do you want to even be like this? Why? What's the reason? Mm-hmm. Just because you want to? Like, yeah, he's, <laughs> like damn. he's trying to. I think he's trying to break him. Yeah. And I think that was really really cool and he kind of really felt bad for loki and then that kind of brings it up to uh the and i like how um like in avengers they're bringing back all of his scenes from um 2012 avengers Mm -hmm. like back then you know they didn't have a plan that a loki series was gonna happen but they're pulling scenes from that movie and then making it more meaningful than it needed to be like than it was back then which i think it's kind of funny, like a little nod. They're just like milking it more essentially. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call them milking it, but just kind of giving it more meaning. So then kind of like when we watch, when we go back and watch those movies, we can, I guess, look more into it when Loki was smiling when he was taking the eye or making people bow down to him. Oh, yeah. I think about your exactly. Yeah. But that kind of leads to the like one of the biggest things in the show, the Infinity Stones reveal. <laughs> what do you think? I think, like, I can understand. I think it's hilarious that they put that in there. But then it's like, a, oh, well, we use them for paperweights. I'm like, we just, like, during for what the past 10, 10 plus years, we've been told the Infinity Stones and whoever has them. Is the most powerful thing in the universe. And then here is Casey who has some in his desk. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. It's like we, like you said, we've been learning about these whole Infinity Stone, the whole Infinity Saga from these past what twenty three movies or so that talked about the Infinity Stones. And then literally, it was just like watching the first episode of Loki. It's like a kick in the balls. Like, yeah, Infinity Stones. They, this the whole TVA has dealt with this like a bunch of times. And mm-hmm. like I said, it's funny that they use them as paperweights. I'm like, are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it's just a great way to show how powerful the TVA is. But also mm-hmm. to show like, oh, these stones are useless outside of their timeline. And it mm-hmm. kind of and it shows that the TVA isn't really a part of this universe, that the MCU MCU universe that we've known for the past 23 plus movies. Like, yeah. they're their own thing, and I think that's kind of brilliant when you think about it as a TV series. Like, mm-hmm. they can pretty much do whatever they want. Yeah, because isn't the TVA, like, it's like their own world. Like, mm-hmm. pretty much, I think they were saying, I think it was Mobius, saying, like, he was pretty much born into this. Or even, mm-hmm. I think he's with Casey, I believe, um, said that he was born to a desk or whatever. Yeah, so, he like, goes, I've been behind a desk my whole life. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy, because, like, that's going to be their whole life, which is crazy, and it's, like... And, like, I did remember seeing, like, they had a little glimpse of what the TVA's world was, and it's, like, this big-ass, like, whole advanced, like, civilization that they live in, and it's, like, whoa, like, 
and it just looks like normal people that is just coming by because literally they literally had the power to time travel to anywhere. Like, mm. Damn. <laughs> I know. I think it's really cool. It just shows how strong they are. Mm-hmm. But my favorite scene of the episode was when he was looking into his future. And yeah. he was pretty much breaking down all the way. But that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Hiddleston was going crazy with the acting. I thought that was amazing to watch. And then the soundtrack during that scene, like it made you truly feel bad for Loki. You do, because I like you, like going back, it's his 2012 Loki after the first Avengers movie. Like obviously we as we watch those these movies, we knew what's gonna ha- we know what's gonna happen to Loki. He's gonna die by Thanos's by Thanos choking him to death essentially. And twenty the twenty twelve Loki does not know that. So just making him watch what he's gonna be going through these ne- throughout the whole movies that we've watched already, like seeing his growth, his decline, growth again and all that. Showing that he had a brother he had Thor that actually cared about him at some point. And then he had a point where he trusted Thanos for a little bit. And mm-hmm. twenty twelve Loki obviously did not know that. Yeah, this Loki all he wanted was to rule. But did he have any good reason to why he wanted to rule? No. Nope. So I just uh, I just like that part of him like roasting him and then going from that scene to this scene mm-hmm. of him realizing, kind of essentially doing his whole arc in a matter of minutes. Mm-hmm. It shows his whole life, which I feel like is kind of mean. Also, like mm-hmm. is like that's gonna be his whole life, and I don't I don't I mean I don't know if they did say this or not, but. He will die from Thanos' hands. Mm-hmm. So, like, and I don't think there's any way for him to, like, alter it unless that's going to be somewhat of a plot in the Loki series, but highly doubt it. But that'll be interesting to look into. But I'm very curious to go see where they go from this. I'm very curious how this show is going to end. Because yeah, he cause... said during this episode, he's like, I'm never going to go back, am I? Mm-hmm. And, like, and he pre- and Mobius pretty much said, nope your time variant like you're stuck here or whatever okay we're gonna use you for the rest of your life or something similar to those lines Mm -hmm. so i'm very very i think this is the one show that can go off into many seasons yeah because i feel like i think they said that this show could branch off into like what the future movies are going to go into Mm -hmm. so i think this show has going to have the biggest impact of the three so far moving forward with the MCU, especially with how the multiverse was explained. Mm-hmm. You think it'll be better than WandaVision? I think think it might have the potential, yes. Yeah. It'll be interesting, because I, I do I do remember, I know I kind of spoiled myself watching the trailer. I don't know if I want to tell you this or not, but there is some scenes that will be a little bit interesting. Don't um, tell me. <laughs> yeah. I just looked at the cast of this series and I saw Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner. I saw like uh, Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious to see who's going to make an appearance. Uh, and then Richard E. Grant's going to be in it too. Yeah. It's going to be funny. It's just like, you know, there's a bunch of, there's a lot of ways that this Loki series can go into. It can go into like, uh, movies from the future through the Infinity Saga. It can go even back if they wanted to. Like, it'll be interesting of what they're gonna look go into through this movie. Like, it's literally it's just pretty. The whole plot is that another version of Loki is taking over and is causing this whole like timeline to get screwed up essentially. So they're trying to use the 2012 Loki is how I'm referencing it uh, to help save or get rid of the bad Loki apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to see where this goes. Um, I'm pretty sure we're both in agreement that uh, the hooded figure is she Loki, correct? That's what I've heard, but I, I don't. I know, like, I saw, it could... a, Seth, I saw a Seth photo. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I saw a Seth photo of a woman in what appeared to look like a Loki costume. Oh, so you somewhat spoiled yourself then? Yeah, potentially. <laughs> I mean, I think I saw that like a year ago when they were already filming. So I kind of knew She Loki was possibly in this movie. I just had no idea in what aspect. Mm-hmm. 
I was still thinking of this though. <laughs> yeah, or it could be just a Loki, a different version of a Loki, which is would be awesome. I mm-hmm. want to see him fight himself. Just as yeah. long as it's better than Vision. <laughs> Vision versus White Vision. Yeah. <laughs> That was I. That well, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah, that was kind of dumb. But yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Anyways, yes, definitely my fit. I think mm-hmm. moving forward, I'm very excited, and I think it could potentially be beat Wandavision. And I'm hoping so. I mean, like from what I've what I've seen so far, I'm I'm gonna be hoping it's been it's gonna be up to my expectations. Like uh, comparing to like the first, let's say, two episodes from Wandavision, uh, they were kind of. Okay, but then it obviously built up to it. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping, yeah. So I'm hoping this Loki will build up to this as well. So, yeah. Do you have anything yeah. else? I'm just so pumped for this show. I can't wait. I'm just excited for another show to be watching weekly. I think that's gonna yeah. Be awesome. mm-hmm. Oh, I do remember this one scene. I thought this was pretty funny. The whole DB Cooper scene. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. so I didn't even know who DB Cooper was. Oh, do you not know? I actually looked into this, and it's I did actually figured out. I did learn about it, but I didn't know mm-hmm. before the show. Mm-hmm. Like it's an actual. This was an actual person. Mm-hmm. Like that's freaking nuts. Like, that yeah, they took a real don't know person. How he escaped? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they used the portal. Mm-hmm. He just for a bet against Thor. Like that's funny. Mm-hmm. That's really funny. And then, but like, I think the real story is that he, they, like, he parachuted down to like this uh untouched force or whatever but there are rumors like where he's actually still alive and they actually did like a manhunt but obviously they had no luck and i think this was around the 70s i think from what i remember and i think they just closed this case in like 2016 where they had no like leading no leads at all to like find out where this person is because he could be alive or like when he jumped out of that plane he like pretty much died instead (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, but that's pretty funny that, like, how they incorporated this t- real-life person into Loki, and, like, I wonder if they're gonna do anything similar then, uh, to, Lo- to Loki. I wonder if they're gonna incorporate anything that happened in real life. Uh, oh, I think they will. If they did it right it. off the first episode, we're definitely gonna get more of it. Huh. That'll be very interesting to look into, and trying to think, I mean, like, probably, like, uh, previous history, historical, like, Weird things that are going to occur. And then it's going to be Loki instead of it, because it's Loki. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a great way to show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is a wrap of a giant ass episode. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but they've been talking a lot. Well, it's been a good amount. So a lot of interesting things came out. I'm really excited. Loki, thank God. I do love having another Marvel series come back. Um,. Let's hope this lives up to my expectations. Yeah, I cannot wait for more. And I can't wait for more movies to come out either. So this yes. is going to be amazing. I know. I <laughs> so you can uh, listen to us on Spotify or YouTube. If you have any topics you would like us to talk about, you can contact us via Twitter. Anything else you might want to add? No, uh, nothing much. I'm just hoping a lot of new stuff comes out soon that I can watch because I have been watching nothing right now. So besides yeah. Loki, but I need more <laughs> stuff to watch. <laughs> also, I'm busy also, so it's hard to watch. <laughs> what can you do? Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Have a good one. All right. See ya. Mm-hmm.